Hello and welcome to How To Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller and today I'm gonna to show you how to take your FX3 or your A7S3 and how to uh, take advantage of a feature that many of us aren't using in wedding films that I think we should and that is the time lapse. The nice thing about using the Sony a7S III or the FX3 is it has a built-in intro velometer. Intro velometer. Intro velometer. Intro velometer. Intro in, intro velometer. I don't know how to say that word. I'm gonna hold on. I, I need to Google it. Okay, I Googled it and it's intro. Nope. Okay, I Googled it and it's intro intro velometer. Intro velometer. Okay, what that means is that the camera by itself can do timers so that it can take multiple pictures uh, time after time over a period of time. Back when I had the Canon 5D Mark III, I had to actually buy an intervolometer an intervolometer. I'm not going to be able to ever say that correctly. I had to buy an intervolometer externally, plug it in, and then set that so that the camera would know when to take pictures. So again, the nice thing about the a7S III and the FX3 and some other Sony cameras is it has that built in. So before I dive into the camera and talk to you about specific settings and how to set up a time lapse, I want to make it known a few things that you should be considering before starting your time lapse. The first one is this, make sure that it is worthy of a time lapse. I remember when I got started doing these and I was incorporating them in all of my films, I would uh, do a time lapse on things that didn't matter that they were time-lapsed. Uh, for instance, I would like film, uh, you know, the top of the church building, the steeple or something on a gorgeous blue day with no clouds in the sky. And so I would do these time lapses, but nothing went by. Okay, so make sure that you're focusing on something that has a lot of clouds or stars in the sky or sun going down, sun coming up, moon coming out, uh, streaks of cars coming by, that sort of thing. Make sure that those things are noticeable because whenever you do a time lapse, you want it to have purpose and you want it to have movement. Okay, shadows are another really cool thing that, you know, can go across the screen. Sculpting with Time in their films has incorporated a lot of time lapse and they they focus on stuff like that shadows where you can see the sun you know moving throughout the day and the shadows get longer or shorter and it looks really cool so whenever you decide to do a time lapse make sure that it is worth it to do the time lapse whenever I shoot time lapses one thing I am not doing is full on uh, manual mode okay I'm actually switching my camera from manual to either uh, aperture priority or shutter priority and the reason that I am picking either aperture or shutter priority is because uh, as time passes, the sun is going to go in and out behind clouds. Things are going to happen and your lighting is going to change. So if I have everything set manually and it's constantly the same, then that is going to mean that my image in my picture is going to get darker or brighter, potentially blown out or not. So whenever I have it set to aperture priority or shutter priority, I know that the light that is coming into the camera is going to be as consistent as possible despite the changing light circumstances. So I always set mine on either aperture priority or shutter priority. Uh, that just kind of depends on the circumstances and it's a call that I make when I get there. I don't prefer one or the other. It's just what I like to do. So pick either aperture priority or shutter priority whenever you decide to do a time lapse. The one manual thing that I do leave on is Kelvin. I want the color temperature between my images to stay consistent for as long as the time lapse is running. If you leave your camera on auto white balance, that is going to mean that the color temperature is going to shift between the photos that you take. It is much easier to correct everything when the Kelvin is set at the beginning and stays consistent throughout the entire image. 
One last thing that I wanna cover before I actually jump into the camera settings is that I actually take raw photos for my time lapses. I do not just hit play on the camera and then speed that up. The reason is, is I want the highest quality of video for my time lapse. And I know that raw photos are gonna be the, the, the highest resolution. They are going to give me the most detail and they are gonna give me the most information. Also, I can shoot those in raw. So so I can mess with the color and push the color and make it look exactly how I want it to look. Whereas if I just, you know, hit play on my camera and then speed up that, that video, uh, that can work, but it's not going to give me uh, the same clarity. It's not going to give me the same resolution. It's not going to give me the same look. So whenever I do time lapses, I always do raw photos and then I take those photos through Lightroom and Premiere and I make them into a time-lapse video. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Sony a7S III or the FX3 into the menu system and show you how to set up that uh, time-lapse to take all those pictures. The first thing that you're gonna need to do is put your camera in a photo mode. These options will not show up on your Sony camera if you are in video mode. So you need to put it into a photo mode. Again, that photo mode that I prefer is either gonna be aperture priority or it's going to be shutter priority. I also have the camera automatically set up to take raw photos because that, again, I want the highest quality. I want the most play when it comes to post to editing my photos and getting them to look the best. So I shoot those photos in raw. What you're gonna wanna do is click on the menu button and in the number two shooting, go down to uh, menu number five, which is what it says drive mode. Go over and go into the interval shooting interval shooting, turn that on, and then you have a few options here. Uh, the shooting start time, uh, after you click it, it will wait um, a, a little bit of time, and so I just have it at one second. The shooting interval is how many seconds between each shot you are going to take. So I like having mine at seven seconds. Some people like to put it at three or five or 10 or 20. Just kind of depends on the look that you are going for and what you want. The number of shots. You can set this to, uh, you know, kind of whatever you want it to be. And here at 500, it's going to tell me for seven seconds, that is going to take about an hour of time it, to get um, that full 500 frames uh, from that. Okay. And again, those are the only things that I mess with. Uh, I get the shot all framed up and then I turn the autofocus off after everything is in focus and then I hit the uh, picture taking button, the shutter, the click, I do it and then my um, time lapse is off and running and it is going to create something amazing for me. So that is how you set up a time lapse with the Sony a7S III or the FX3. So let me ask you this question. What are some of your favorite things to time lapse? Um, you know, I really like doing lots of clouds. I really want to try and get out there and do some star photography at night where those star wipes kind of go all over the screen. That's something that I am really, really interested in. What are some of your favorite things to time lapse? Please let me know in the comments below, especially when it comes to shooting on a wedding day. What are some of those things that you absolutely love to time lapse? If you're not already a part, please check out our Facebook group. You can uh, join it by going to howtofilmweddings.com slash community or click this little uh, button over here to the side and that will take you to the group and you can be a part of the conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in to our video this week and until next time, we will see ya.